and welcome to this final episode of On Maths before your Thursday exams. We're just going to be covering some last minute revision tips. Enjoy! <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris Gilpin and welcome to this last ever episode, last ever? Last episode before on maths, before your exam. Anyway, <laughs> um, so uh, I'm going to just cover some last minute topics which I haven't really covered in the predicted papers at all uh, in any of my previous videos. Um, so that's the bulk of today. The first thing I just want to say is please use the .uk site if the .com site's not loading. Um, any URL, any link, anything will work if you just change the .com with a .uk. The .uk site is on a really, really quick server and it's been fast all of today, all of yesterday. The .com site, I'm, I'm at the maximum I can be uh, with that hosting company. So they don't, they don't offer any faster servers unfortunately, which is why I've set up the .uk site. Uh, with the .uk site, it's a commercial like um, host. They host massive sites and so we can just um, have a lot quicker website speed. Uh, after the exams, I'm just going to switch the .com site to the new one, but I didn't want that large disruption, uh, which inevitably it would have, so it just wipes out the UK site. The only thing you can't do with the UK site is log in, but you shouldn't need to log in now and save your scores uh, this close to the exam, so please use the .uk site. So, we're going to cover some topics that I think will come up. I've been looking at the Edexcel higher, mainly, Although most of these topics, if not all of them, apply to the OCR and AQA higher uh, paper twos as well. So, first uh, topic. Now, this is one that we don't really talk about much, but surface area of a cuboid. To find the surface area, you work out the individual area of the rectangles. This rectangle here is 8 by 30 high, so you do 8 times 30. Work out the area of this one, which is 22 by 30. Work out the area of the top one, which is 8 by 22, because that's 22 there. So you do 8 times 22, 22 times 30, 8 times 30. But each face has a complete identical face on the other side. So this one here has one at the back, this one here has one at the other side, and the one at the top has one at the bottom. So you add up the three areas and just double it, and that's it. Don't forget it's surface area, area is centimetres squared. Ah, there we go, nice and quick. Um, I'll give you a second if you want to read the question. Now this question is just a lowest common multiple question, so you want to do the 35 times table, 14 times table, and then work out which one comes up first. It's involving time, and the most common mistake with time is, say if you have 70 minutes, people will think that's 0.7 of an hour. There is 60 minutes in an hour, so 70 minutes is an hour and 10 minutes. So just try and remember that for that question. Okay, you, you're going to have shape and algebra in some way. Now you are be asked to find the area or whatever, the area equals this, find out what x is, or you could be asked to find an expression. Now with this type of question, it's always helpful just ignoring what the question is and just writing down what you know. Just write down things on the diagram that you know. For instance, it's a square, so if that's 24 there, 24x, sorry, there, then this will, at the bottom will be 24x. Uh, if that top left one is x, then this one's going to be 23x, because then it has to add up to 24x. The m is the midpoint, therefore it's going to be 12x below the m and 12x above the m. Then I know how to work out the areas of the white triangles, okay, times the two lengths together, the base and the height, and then halve it. And I know the area of the big square, 24x times 24x. So I then do the big square, take away the three triangles, and that will give me the answer. But you can get an awful lot of the marks by just writing down what you know, even if you don't get the right answer. Okay, That's what a four mark, five mark question is. Is giving you marks for the things you know. Right, stem leaf diagrams, I think they will come up. <laughs> I'm, pretty much, I'm pretty sure they will come up. Um, now, I've not done draw a stem leaf diagram, but you know what the three marks are for. Drawing the uh, stem leaf diagram, ordering the numbers, and your key. And the key can be any value. Remember, the point of the key is 2 stroke 1 could mean 2.1. 
So the key says, no, it doesn't mean 2.1, it means 21. To find the median, uh, you work out how many values there are, 31, add 1, 32, and then halve it, which is 16. And you find the 16th value, okay? Or you can write them all out as numbers and then cross them off from each side, that's fine, that'll work. Or um, you can cross them out from each side within the stem and leaf diagram, top left, bottom right. That's slightly harder, but that will still work. Now to find the interquartile range. Now there's a proper way of doing this, as there's a way that we, you'll get the mark. Because it's the 16th one is the median, you can just go for the 8th one for the lower quartile, and then 8 plus 16, the 24th one for the upper quartile, and then upper quartile take away the lower quartile. Technically speaking, that's not correct, correct, but it will get you the mark, okay, on all the previous exam questions I've seen. Um, you know, te technically speaking, there's a, there's a long way of doing it, but that will work, so stick with that if you ask that question. Right. Uh, product of prime factors, just do your tree, okay, so 28 and then split it up into 2 times 14, split the 14 up into 2 times 7, and then there's your, there's your prime numbers. Um, if you asked a question on interior exterior angles, just try and remember the interior angles are the amount of triangles you can make from the polygon. Okay, so here I can draw a line from here down to here to make one triangle, and then another one down to here to make two tri uh, three triangles in total. So it's the amount of triangles you can make. Now the amount of triangles you can make is just the amount of sides the shape has take away two. So that has five sides, okay, it's a pentagon. Takeaway two is three. Then times that by 180, okay, and that gives you what all the interior angles add up to, okay? So they will add up to that number. So you then divide it by the amount of sides and you can get each individual one if it's regular. For exterior angles, it's not that complicated. Exterior angles always add up to 360. Okay, exterior angles, if I draw a line from here upwards, okay, upwards, then that would be an exterior angle there. So to work out that exterior angle, so if I put my finger on the line, so it's that angle to the right of my finger, to work out that you just do 360 divided by 5, divided by the amount of sides, okay, and that will get that one. And actually for this question, that is also the same angle on the left hand side of my finger because it's the exterior angle of the other pentagon, okay? And then you just add them together for this question. Or for this question, you can work out the interior angles and then take them away from 360 to work out what it is. It's up to you. Okay, um, we've got a drawing quadratics. Uh, now, with drawing quadratics, the most important thing is, first of all, quadratics, anything with x squared in, should be a, either a U-shape or an upside-down U-shape. If you get a squiggle in the middle, or you get one that jumps, check your table, because you probably answered the question wrong. Mostly on these, they will be symmetrical, okay? So check up here, or up here, that your values are the same as down here, okay? If they're not, if none of them are the same, they might not be symmetrical, but they normally are. When you're drawing them, when you're com connecting the points, make sure it's one line, one smooth line, that go through all the points, if you've got two at the bottom, make sure you go down beneath the two, okay, if it's a quadrat drawing quadratic question. Um, I think that of the two, because quadratic sort of came up in paper one for the Edexcel, I think of the two, it will probably ask you to draw a linear, okay, so make sure you understand y equals mx plus c, and that's one of the few topics that's not on my site at the moment, unfortunately, but make sure you know that. Okay, let's move on. Uh, so. Make sure you understand how to expand, um, you know, and factorize as well. Okay, that didn't really appear on paper one. Uh, this one did, so ignore question B. But foil for that, or whatever method works for you, um, and then factorize. Just put down a set of brackets and try and get the numbers on the outside. Look for numbers, look for letters. Sometimes it's both. Okay. And for the factorise at the bottom, you're looking at two numbers that add together to make the minus 7 and times together to make the 12. Okay, which looking at that is minus 4 and minus 3. There we go. Um, simultaneous equations that might come up, make sure that you put the one of either the x's or the y's the same. Most people find the y's easier to get the same, 
So I times the top equation all by 3 and the bottom equation all by 8 so that I make both of these y's uh, 24y and then work your way to going downwards. This is, I'm not going to go through any more than that. If you don't know simultaneous equations, then there are videos out there. There's revision sites, etc. etc. Um, now, density. Now, don't forget your triangles. Okay, there's speed, distance, time. Okay, distance is the one at the top. Okay, if you think about it, the unit is miles per hour. Miles has to be at the top, hours has to be at the bottom. So, distance at the top, time at the bottom, and obviously speed at the bottom. With this question, it's density. Now, the actual question gives you the triangle. It says the density of it is 4.1 grams per centimeters cubed. Grams is mass, so mass is at the top, and the bottom will be therefore be volume, which is the centimeter cubed bit. So if you remember that distance and mass are at the top of those triangles, you should be fine-ish. You need to work out the volume of this. Don't forget this is a triangle. Okay, so you need to do 10 times 2 to work out the area of this triangle, then halve it, which will be 10, and then times it by how 3D it is. That's how you do any prism. Okay, and actually there's a formula at the front of the exam for a, a volume of a prism. Okay, and then uh, for this question, I would times it by 4.1, okay, because they're both at the bottom of the triangle and mass, which we're looking for at the top. Fantastic, right. Um, cumulative frequency, running totals, you need to have a table of running totals. So the first one's always going to be the frequency, which is 18 on this. Then I'm going to add the 16, add the 6, add the 7, add the 13. Don't forget on the actual graph that you are plotting at the maximum points of each of the groups. So if you look at the top left, 0 to 20, you'll plot it at 20, okay, which is somewhere down here. So you'll plot it at 20, wait, there's 16. Okay, and then you'll plot it at 40, 60, 80, then 100. It's not a frequency polygon where you pick the midpoints. Cumulative frequency is always plotted at the maximum points. Then when you're done, you're supposed to do a smooth curve. You'll always get the mark for joining them up with straight lines. Okay, so it's easier to just get a ruler, join them up with straight lines. But if you are a curve genius, please feel free to use a curve. You'll then be maybe be asked to find the median, um, which. You know, if it goes up to 60, the medium's across from half of that, which is 30. Okay, um, solve a question like that, uh, solving a quadratic, you sh could factorise it. In fact, the question might force you to factorise it, or just use a quadratic formula. Okay, make sure you understand how to use a quadratic formula. A is 3 for this. Don't forget B is minus 18, because it that's not an 18, it's a minus 18, and C would be... 15 and you'll get two answers right um, volume of a cylinder I think invo is involved in this okay these types of question which waffle on and keep going on about stuff just try and make sure you focus like I said before on things you know I know how to work out the volume of this cylinder and it looks like the question sort of hinting that it wants me to because it needs to store the same amount of water so therefore has the same volume so I do 65 squared times pi so pi r squared for the circle and then times it by the 180 and then I just try and figure out how to finish off the question okay uh, I think for this one then you what is it divide by or get it equal to pi r squared h but with the the dimensions it says in the question so with r being 71 and then just solve so find out what the new height has to be right now that brings me on to histograms does it yeah it does now just to answer a huge loads of you were talking about histograms your point which is valid it's not totally valid but it's valid is in the video I did before I worked out where the median was and all I did was halve the total frequencies. And a lot of you said, why didn't you add one onto it? Now the rule is, for discrete data, for small amounts of discrete data, you have to add on one to find out the median's position. But for continuous data, for large amounts of continuous data, I think it's above 30, uh, n is above 30, you don't have to add one on. Okay, that's a rule across all of mathematics in any textbook, any revision guide, you don't need to add one on. Now, I'm, I'm not going to go into any more detail than that, but for histograms, for 
cumulative frequency. Don't forget, for cumulative frequency, you work out, you know, it goes up to 60 and you draw a line across from 30. You don't add 1 to the 60 when you draw the line across to find the median. Okay? So for discrete data, which means just numbers, if it's from a list or from the stem leaf diagram we did earlier, then you have to add 1. You have to add 1. But for continuous data, when it's to do with histograms, cumulative frequency, things like that, or for grouped data, okay, you don't have to add one on. Okay, it's controversial, I know, but you know, what can you do? Uh, this isn't anything to do with median, but I just thought I'd highlight that point because a lot of you asked about that. Um, don't forget the triangle with this. Now, be careful with the triangle for this. The triangle for this, technically speaking, is frequency at the top frequency density and class width at the bottom. Class width is how wide the group is, which is just how wide the bar is, and frequency density is this made up thing which we describe the height of the histogram. Okay, so it seems really easy, but it's not quite that easy. The frequency is proportional to the frequency density times class width. So they will always, when they ask this question, give you an example of one always check that example so what is this one 0 to 30 so class width is 30 and the height well it actually doesn't have a height on this one so but make sure you check the one that they give you to see if it makes sense okay so for this one I would do 30 times what equals 27 and then that will tell me what the height is and then I'd just use that triangle to work out the rest of them okay I think histograms will come up <laughs> I te technically speaking, I don't know that, but I just generally feel they will come up, okay? And I think the consensus is there will be a histogram question. Probably like Hannah Sweet, who will have all sorts of algebra over it, who knows? Okay, um, make sure you understand repeated and reverse percentages. Reverse percentages, just be careful with reverse percentages. When it says the price is this now, what was the price? It, you just don't find, say if it goes down by 10%, you don't just find 10% of the new amount and add it on, okay? Try and make sure you revise that. For this one, it says the car depreciates 1.5% uh, each year. Um, I do this with multipliers, I find it much easier. Okay, that's the way I do it. Um, depreciate means goes down, okay? They will expect you to know what that means. If it depreciates by 1.5%, you always start off with 100%, take away the 1.5%, okay, and you get, what, 98.5%, and as a multiplier, you divide it by 100, which is 0 0.985, okay, I'm very tired, it's quite late, <laughs> so if I'm saying the complete random gibberish numbers, then please forgive me, and then you just times the 2000 price by 0 0.985 for every year until... 2003 okay so the 2001 then 2002 then 2003 okay or times it by 0 0.985 to the power of three okay if it's three years all right then it's that simple multipliers just make this question so much easier you can work out 1.5 percent okay then take it away and then do the whole process again for the next year it's just it takes too long and it's so likely you're so likely to make mistakes and you end up with huge rounding errors if it's after 10 years, okay? Uh, what's this one? Okay, so bounds, bounds likely to come up. Um, bounds, there's some questions sometimes which just go, you know, why is, this a, why is this not the case? And it doesn't necessarily hint to you that it's a question on bounds. It won't necessarily say, what's the upper bound or lower bound? It will say, will the peg definitely fit in the hole? And it, it won't say anything more than that sometimes. So be careful, be on the lookout for bounds. If a question seems too easy and it's towards the end of the paper and it's like, will that peg fit in the hole? Well, of course it will. Okay, the, the area is absolutely fine. Think, uh, actually, maybe they're going at something else, especially if they say he measures it to one decimal place, then it's like, uh, it's probably a bounds question. Um, so this says 13 meters correct to the nearest meter. The lower bound of that value is 12.5. The upper bound is 13.5. Um, I've talked about this before. Don't go down the road of 13.49 recurring. Otherwise, it makes it a nightmare to work out any calculations. 13.49 recurring is the same as 13.5. Okay, there is no difference between those numbers. 
So saying 13.49 recurring is not more correct than 13.5. They are the same number. Okay, try and remember that. They're the same number, just upper bounds always are the same distance away from the value as the lower bound. Okay, you take away 0.5 for this question if it's to the nearest meter, you take away half a meter, you add half a meter for the upper and lower bound. Um, sometimes, when, especially involving divisions, sometimes to find the upper bound of an answer, you want the lower bound of the number. Okay, it's, it's you know, whenever something's at the bottom of a fraction, the bigger it is, the smaller the actual fraction becomes. Okay, so just be careful with that. Okay, some algebraic fractions. Um, I've, I've talked a lot about um, simplifying them, the fact you want to get the brackets at the top, brackets at the bottom, you want to factorise top and bottom, and there will be a common fraction you can cross off. Um, adding and subtracting, with these types of question, you want to try and get the bottoms the same. Okay, it's, it's that simple. So you want to times top and bottom here by x, top and bottom here by 2 plus x in brackets. Okay, that will get the bottoms the same and then just take away the tops, expand the tops, take away the tops, okay? Um, and the final one, now loads of you have asked, I think you're convinced, and you're convincing me that this will come up, Transformation, uh, graphical transformations, okay? There are um, graphical transformations of, of sine and cos on the website, I think, I can't remember what demon questions it was, but it is on there uh, if you want to practice those, and those are equally likely to come up than this question. Um, just try and remember that if something's happening inside the function, inside the brackets, then it's to do with the x, it's to do with the left and right. If it's happening outside the brackets, it's to do with the y-axis, it's to do with up and down. Anything inside the brackets, obviously to do with x, it's the opposite way round to what you think. So for this one it says x minus 2. Minus 2 does not mean that way. Minus 2 means right, okay, it's the opposite of which way you think, so you just shift it right to, okay, so the coordinates of that would be, what, 5, 5, okay, and for the outside one, uh, it's to do with the y direction, okay, so uh, it would become 3, 10, wouldn't it, uh, if that's a 5, yeah, 3, 10, okay, it just doubles the, it stretches it out, now a 2 on the inside, a times 2 on the inside, would compress it in. Remember, it's the opposite way round to what you'd think. Okay? And that is it. That is me finished. That is my videos completed. I'm not going to do any more videos. Uh, I'll see if I do want to do a demon question uh, on the site tomorrow. There are a couple more demon questions on the website. I've not managed to have time to do videos for them, um, but use them for practice. I've sort of gone through uh, most of the questions from them. Um, I've got a second predicted paper for Edexcel. Please use the UK site, .uk site to access it. It's, it's on there. You, uh, I'll leave the link in the description. Um, and guys, the best of luck. I really do mean that. I hope there aren't any more Hannah Sweets questions, um, but be prepared for them and be just happy just to go. I've tried my best on that question. But, you know, if I get 95% rather than 100%, that's fine. Be happy with that. Right, the best of luck and thank you very much for watching the video. If you've liked this video, please click like. If you really liked it, please click subscribe. Thank you very much.